Hello and welcome to our first video on attractive forces. These are going to be about forces that exist between particles in a substance, between separate particles, not within the particles themselves. Now so far we have talked about the different states of matter quite a while ago and the differences and the behavior of particles that are in each of these states. What is it though that determines the state of matter at room temperature? If you recall, at room temperature some things are solids, some are liquids, and others are gases as depicted up here. But what is it that determines the state of matter at room temperature? Why are some things solid, liquid, or gas at room temperature? And how does the nature of attractive forces in a material affect its other properties also? Particles can be held together by different types of forces. These forces fall into different categories depending upon what the nature of the attraction is, what's causing the attraction. There are forces that occur within the particles of a substance, within molecules, or within ionic compounds between the ions, and these forces are between atoms or ions and tend to be stronger forces. In this picture up here, we see something such as graphite that has particles attached to each other with strong bonds in layers, but the attractions between these separate layers are much weaker because these are forces of attraction that are not part of a molecule or part of an ionic compound. These other forces are attractions between particles of a substance, meaning between separate molecules or between the atoms of atomic substances such as helium or xenon. These forces between particles tend to be weaker forces than those within the particles of a sample, with of course the notable exception of the attraction that exists between ions in forming an ionic compound. Strong forces exist continuously in a substance due to sharing or even transfer of electrons in a unit of a substance, such as in molecules and ionic compounds. These strong forces can vary in strength depending upon the composition of the substance. The strength of the bond is indicated by how much energy is required to break the bond, which can be determined experimentally. Now this table summarizes some of the different types of bonds within molecules such as covalent bonding or bonds within ionic compounds such as a formula unit of an ionic compound such as the ionic bonding shown here or even within metallic substances where we have individual atoms that actually exist as cations in a sea of electrons. You can see in this diagram what causes that type of attraction and the amount of energy per unit of the substance. We'll just leave it at that. We'll talk more about moles in chapter 10. But the number of kilojoules per mole is shown in this column, a second from the right. And you can see that ionic tend to be overall stronger, although some ionic substances have lower energies to break those bonds than what it takes for some molecular substances because notice that covalent starts up at 1100 kilojoules per mole and goes down to 150 for things like chlorine or water. And your metallic starts up in about that same range as covalent and goes down even lower from 1000 down to 75 kilojoules per mole for things like gold or aluminum or iron. So let's look at these different attractions. It can take from 400 to 4,000 kilojoules per mole to break the strongest bonds, which result from the transfer of electrons between atoms to form ions. Now, let's go ahead and watch a video about the nature of the ionic bond. As you can see here, as two atoms come close to each other, you can see electrons being transferred from the element on the right to the element on the left, so its electron cloud diminished and the other one became more pronounced. Sodium chloride is an example of an ionic compound, such as we see in this upper right-hand corner. Now if we move to covalent bonds, it can take from 150 to 1,100 kilojoules per mole of a substance that's covalently bonded in order to break those bonds. So that indicates that they are still very strong, though overall as a whole they're not considered necessarily as strong as ionic. Recall that covalent bonding arises from sharing electrons. 
In this particular video, we can see two atoms of the same type coming together and their electron clouds joining as they share electrons between the two. And it's a nice symmetrical cloud, so it must be fairly even sharing. Now, in that previous slide, it did indicate equal sharing, but recall that it's also possible to have unequal sharing of electrons in something covalently bonded, and that creates what we call a polar bond. We see that in the upper right-hand corner with hydroxide as oxygen and hydrogen bond to each other. The oxygen pulls that electron more towards the oxygen atom. And in this video, we can see that the element on the left has the electron cloud centered more around it and less is around the element that's on the right. When we compare substances exhibiting these strong forces of attraction, what we see is the general progression from equal sharing in something that's completely nonpolar covalently bonded, such as two of the same type of atom bonded together, as we would see in this top image, moving into less equal sharing that we see in this middle image indicating more of a polar covalent bond between those substances, giving a separation of charge across that molecule, um, creating slight positive and slight negative ends. And then moving on down to the lower image, we see where electrons have been completely transferred, and we end up with an ionic compound which has very strong forces of attraction between these oppositely charged particles. We will also be watching some videos about these in class. Metallic bonding, if you recall, is a little bit different than these. And they require, depending upon the substance, between 75 and 1,000 kilojoules per mole to break those metallic bonds. So atoms in a metal are arranged in a very regular manner. They vibrate about fixed positions. And those outer electrons move very freely, giving us that sea of electrons. And that attraction between those positive cations and that sea of electrons is what we refer to as metallic bonding. And that concludes our first video on these forces of attraction between particles. These were the strong. We'll cover the weak in the next video.